Um, James Hurd. Do you support James Hurd returning as coach of Essendon? I support James Hurd throwing his hat into the ring and going through the process like everybody else. That's what I support. Is there a, I asked this last night on Footy Classified, is there a danger that some in the coaching fraternity who may be interested think that this is a boat race and that James Hurd is going to get shoehorned? Well, I would make that clear. I think the club need to make that very clear. David Barham needs to make a statement around that, that they will be holding a process and it'll be, um, there'll be transparency that's involved in that, which is clear for everybody to see. They need to set that up as quickly as they possibly can. But if there are people out there, and there may be you know, prospective coaches that are thinking, okay, well, I'm hearing all these murmurs and whispers. I haven't had anybody that I know at the club say that you know, James Hurd wants to go back and coach the SN Football Club. I've heard others say that – I've heard. I've read Robbo's articles saying that this is on, and I've heard others say that it's possible that he would like to coach Essen again, but I haven't heard it direct from him that that's exactly what he wants to do. So you're supportive of them making – overtures to him to go through the process. No, no, I'm not saying no. that they should. I'm saying You're that saying if he wants the job, then he has to go and actively pursue the job like everybody else and go through the process. I'm just clarifying No, that. no, I understand what you're saying, but yep. you need to set a process up. Yes. Yeah, so and we're asking a rat right now. It has to be open and transparent, and they have to do what they haven't done. They haven't done since they appointed Matthew Knights a long, long time ago. Yep. I heard he got parachuted into the job. Yes. When at that time I yes. thought the bomber was going to be the coach. Walsfold. Anyway, John Walsfold got parachuted into the job yep. and Rutten effectively got parachuted into yep. the job, right? I'm, I'm so they it. haven't gone through a correct and proper transparent process to elect or find a coach during that period of time. Now is their opportunity to do that. Making a lot of sense to me. You are. Um, have they limited themselves by David Barham saying we need an experienced coach? Well, I think they. Ha if what he meant is that I don't know what, what he meant he by mean? I don't know what he meant by experienced coach. Well, did he mean that coach. somebody had already coached AFL level? Or did he want somebody that had the experience? Well, let because me put I'll it in no, context. Sorry. Okay, I'll give you two. I'll give you two examples. Right. Yep. Chris Fagan was experienced and a good appointment for the Brisbane Lions, but had never coached at AFL level. But I wouldn't rule somebody like a Chris Fagan out. In more recent well, I think time. he did. I think he ruled. He was talking about Ben Rutten, who said he thanked Ben, and Ben's a great person. But, okay, well, I'm but saying we that need I would a more experienced coach. So I see that as someone more experienced than Ben. Am I reading that wrong? Um, I don't know. He would have to clarify that himself. I don't know whether so 16, when he said experienced, I don't know whether he meant a young coach like yeah, you know, like a rookie type coach that had only been around the business for five minutes, or when he meant experience. That you've had years of experience like Adam Kingsley has had. 16 but, years he's been in the it. system. That was my next question. Okay, Craig McRae, a long, long time in the system. Yeah. So, and then you've got Chris Fagan. So you wouldn't want those guys ruled out of your process. No. So in the clarification, define experience. 16 years, Adam Kingsley as an assistant. Is that qualifying him as a more experienced coach, which is David's words, David Barham. We mm. want a more experienced coach. Yep. Or are you talking about AFL senior coaching role as well? Uh, last one, and then we'll get on to some other stuff. Recruiting. Have they? Have, is, Adrian Dodoro's name is always mentioned for right. every year. The fact that he's been there for a long, long time, haven't won a final for a long, long time. But is there pressure mounting on him, and does that need to be cleaned out? I think the pressure is mounting on if there is an external review conducted, which is what they're going to go through, that whole thing, and that is a properly constructed external review, and there's no reason to suggest that it won't be, then until that's completed – there will be certain pressures on everybody that currently holds a position. It is there. a long time to hold a position without winning your final. No, that's, that's I know true. That's, but he's recruiting. It's popular to kick Adrian. And Always. I'm, I'm not doing that. But they are, that's the fact there. And then you look back and go, okay, parts of that are coach, parts of that are development. Parts I would think, I would think in, in, in defense of anybody that's been in that position, take his name out of it. In defense of anybody that's been in that position, when you've had constant coaching changes, a lack of success, and there hasn't been a blueprint around what it is that you're trying to do and establish type of game plan and consistency around that developing, nurturing players. I think it's very difficult for anybody in a recruiting position to have a great strike rate yep. and have success. And, uh, and It's a little bit different. If you look at, say, you know, I, I look at the model of, say, Sydney. If I'm Essendon, I'm looking at – I'm analysing them and finding out what is it about Sydney, what is it about them – that has enabled them to be successful over this recent period of time. And yep. it's probably 15 years now. But what is it? 
is not luck. No. There's something that they have done structurally and obviously they've had consistency of coaching, but there's a consistency of messaging which makes it easier for you then to develop players around that and nurture players, send them back. Okay, they're not doing this. Bring them back. This is the way that we do things. Find out what it is about them. And Geelong too. I mean, Geelong have had sustained success around their team. What is it that those clubs do? Find it out. You don't have to mimic them, but okay, we can add that to you know, the material of our club.